I'm Duncan McLeod, and this is TCS Plus, brought to you by Tech Central. If you haven't already done so, please do subscribe to us on YouTube. The address to use is youtube.com slash techcentral. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and you'll never miss another show from Tech Central. Now, Open Access Data Centers, or OADC for short, is a data center business formed by the or in the WIOC group, and they're making some big investments, not only here in South Africa, but across the continent. I'm very pleased now to uh, welcome Darren Bedford, Group Chief Development Officer at Wyok Group, to talk about OADC's expansion plans, specifically around a new data center build in Isando, east of Johannesburg. And uh, Darren, you're joined here in the studio today by uh, Wayne Dessau, and he's Chief Executive of CypherWave, and he has moved into this new data center, and they're doing some really interesting things. So we're going to unpack all of that in the discussion today. But Darren, tell me a little bit about Wyok Group. I think a lot of people know Wyok as an investor in the original Easy submarine cable on Africa's east coast. But you're much more than that today. Uh, tell me a bit about the history of Wyok Group and then how Open Access Data Centers was formed and what your plans are. Thanks, Duncan. So Wyok Group was formed uh, to house both Wyok Connectivity and Open Access Data Centers mm -hmm. as a group company. Uh, and that's to facilitate uh, investments in both submarine cables and the data center business. So traditionally, WIAC was is is a uh, submarine cable operator and uh, national long haul provider. And uh, two or three years ago, we decided that we were going to branch out into data centers and specifically to land the Equiano cable in mm. Nigeria. So that was our first investment. Uh, we secured land uh, in Lekki and Lagos. And we've just finished constructing the uh, cable landing station and full data center in Nigeria. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and you've, you've invested uh, in, in the Equiano, Equiano cable itself, uh, and you've built a number of data centers around the African continent, and you've landed the Equiano cable, if I'm not mistaken, just south of Durban in Amazam Toti. That's the Two Africa Gira cable system. Two Africa. Two Africa Gira cable system. Mm -hmm. And that's landed in our new Amanzan Toti data center, which mm -hmm. is located about two kilometers from the beach. Right. Uh, and that is now ready for service. Mm -hmm. And uh, customer hosting will start uh, in a short time. Fantastic. Uh, the cable will go live probably in Q3 of this year. Q3. To Africa, not Equiano. My apologies. Now, tell me a bit about what's involved in landing one of these uh, these mega cables in, in a data center. Is, is, it, is it like a traditional data center? I'm imagining there are a lot of interconnects <coughs> happening inside the building with other telecommunications operators. Just maybe take us through what's actually involved in bringing one of these cables ashore. So, basically, it starts with the, the cable ship, which lands the uh, cable shore landing, mm -hmm. and that goes into a beach manhole. And then that's backhauled on the uh, front hall submarine cable through into the SLTE room or the CLS room. Right. So in the data center, we've got a specific room where it houses the uh, power termination equipment, mm -hmm. and that's where the cable ends. Okay. And then from there, the cross connects go through into the uh, SLTE rooms where uh, all the operators will host the equipment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how big is this facility? The facility is a five megawatt facility. Yeah. Uh, it'll host, uh, when complete, about 500 racks. Okay. Uh, and that will be linked onto the new NLD 5 and 6, mm -hmm. and new fiber rings through to New Germany and back into Durban. Okay. And now all other telecommunications operators would then have interconnects, I imagine, in that building. Correct. To get access to the two African Correct. cables so and onward connectivity. It's a fully open access data center, mm -hmm. so no cost uh, for bringing fibers in. Uh, so it's a free and fair, mm -hmm. uh, no cross connects. Mm -hmm. Open access data center is about a year old now, I believe. About two years old. Okay, coming yeah. off for two years. Okay. Yeah. Um, t tell me a bit about some of the investments it's made in that time. So our first investment was in Lagos. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, ultimate design capacity of 20 megawatts. Uh, we've deployed just over two megawatts at the moment, which is live. Uh, then we have our Manzantoti data center, which has landed the Gira cable. Uh, we have our new facility in Arsando which is a uh, design capacity of 12 megawatts. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we've just completed Rondebosch in Cape Town. Okay. And Brackenfell will be live in April. Okay, okay. Now, you, you speak about a core-to-edge strategy in open access data centers. What do, what do you mean by that exactly? So along with the larger data centers, we've also built about 40 edge data centers around South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, this is to support a specific customer. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically, it's an aggregation site where we aggregate all the last miles, and then we put it onto our long-haul network back to our core data centers. Right. So what, what, is, what is an edge data center exactly? What does it look like? What advantages does it bring to customers? It's similar to a big data center, but just on a smaller scale. So it'll okay. be a traditionally 10 to 50 rack data center. Uh, 
a tier three design, right? Uh, and basically give a little, b- little bit more uh, structure and reliability to a smaller town, or mm-hmm. we will locate these edge data centers. Right, right. And the advantages it brings to customers. Why would you host in an edge data center as opposed to say your facility in Isando? So customers are looking for where they're going to put their local equipment for terminating their metro links and things like that. So mm-hmm. that's specifically what those sites okay. are for. Okay, understood, yeah. understood. Now, you've raised quite a bit of money uh, as open access data centers or wire group uh, to invest in open access data centers. Uh, just take us through some of the details there and the fundraisings you've done. So we've, we've raised uh, over $100 million for investments in our initial phase of data centers, and that covers uh, Nigeria mm-hmm. and the investments in South Africa. Right. Uh, we are planning further expansion into Zambia and Malawi. Yes. Uh, and... Uh, Our data center in DRC, which is under construction at the moment, will be live sometime in July, August. Okay. Okay. So lots of investments happening. Yeah, lots. The Isando facility, uh, tell us, it's a 12 megawatt facility. Um, Why is Isando so popular for data centers, by the way? There's a lot of them being built there. Uh, (laughs) One is power. Power is very reliable in Isando. Is it it exempted from load shedding, that area? It It is exempted from load shedding. Uh Uh, It's also where a lot of the activity is happening in terms of where cables terminate, et cetera. Right. So uh, the other facilities around in the area, you know, so it's key for us to have, it's almost like an Alsando campus now. Yes. Very similar to Docklands in London, mm. yes. you know, where we've got uh, quite a few data centers around. So right. uh, it just gives customers a lot more choice and flexibility. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Makes makes sense if there's no no yeah. power cuts in that area, and also exactly. and also uh, given the fact that there is so much telecommunications infrastructure yeah. in the ground there already. Wayne, uh, you're moving into this uh, data center. Tell us a little bit about CypherWave, first of all, what it is you guys do, uh, for those who haven't been introduced to the company yet, and, um, and then how you came about, how this deal with OADC came about. Yeah, sure, thanks, Duncan. So, um, so we've been in the telecommunication space for about 13 years now, um, and uh, providing connectivity, voice, cloud services. Mm-hmm. Um, we had our own data center, which was housed up in Madrand, a 220 square meter facility, 80 racks in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and what we were doing was um, we got to a point, I guess, like most businesses, um, where we had to review um, uh, our data center. And, and we were going down the journey of ISO certification and we were evaluating, you know, uh, what was needed to kind of to kind of get us to to, to our ISO. Um, and uh, what had happened uh, um, some 18 months back was we started to look at the impact of load shedding. I mean, running a facility like that, we're managing you know, our own diesel yeah. uh, storage, um, as well as maintenance around our UPSs, our generators, our aircon units. So you weren't um, exempt from load shedding. So we were not <laughs> exempt from load shedding, unfortunately, <laughs> being in Midrand. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and it is quite taxing you know, from a business perspective. Uh, we then had a look to see you know, how core our data center was uh, and whether it was a space that we wanted to play in. Of course, um, as you know, there's been a vast amount of investment in the data center uh, space over the last, you know, two to three years. um, And the last 18 months being the most significant with a lot of new um, uh, facilities coming online, Mm. OADC being one of them. Um, And where the conversation came up from is, um, I think CypherWave has been a part in partnership with WIOC for well over 10 years. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, and so there was already an established uh, partnership that was there. Um, you know, WIOC provide us with all of our uh, IP transit traffic uh, that we have, our NLD capacity uh, that we have. And so That's we have a national a, long distance. National long distance, 100% correct. So we have quite a strategic relationship um, um, with, with Darren and the team. Right. Um, through the process of evaluation, e- evaluating what our options were going to be, um, we, then, we then reached out to Darren and we had a chat um, about what we were looking to do. Currently, um, CypherWave's network is spanned across a number of data centers uh, as part of our national footprint. So we sit in the Terraco, Joburg, Cape Town, Durban facilities. In Johannesburg, we sit in, um, uh, in Terraco, as I mentioned, but also we sit in Africa data centers, mm-hmm. we sit in Hertzner data center, and then we had our own data center. So um, after sitting down and, and, and kind of chatting with Darren, and they advised us what they were looking to do in terms of OADC's footprint mm-hmm. coming into uh, South African shores, uh, we then started to evaluate it uh, a lot more closer. Uh, the facilities that they're building are quite impressive. They meet all of the standards. Um, and 
Um, I think what actually helped the conversation along was the fact that we had such a strong partnership. Mm. Right. We needed the independence that we that we currently had at the time operating our own data center, and a lot of our service assurance comes from having the ability to be nimble mm-hmm. ourselves. Right. So um, it was it was purely around timing. Um, OADC were building the Isando facility. It's uh, and. Um, uh, through that evaluation and, and what we were able to negotiate around our needs for our data center, you know, uh, the team came to the party and they gave us, um, you know, the opportunity to create almost a data center within a data center, mm-hmm. um, which I don't think is something that 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 uh, OADC want to easily replicate <laughs> 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 because of because of the amount of work you can imagine. And yeah. and I had a lot of respect for the team. They were building out a data center. Uh, and so there was a project for that. And then there was another project alongside of that, which was CyphoWave's data center inside of OADC. Um, and so you have two sets of teams that are busy doing what they need to do. Um, but it was great. We had phenomenal support from the entire, entire OADC team. Um, and we were able to, uh, you know, to complete that project and migrate our data center mm-hmm. in, a space of, uh, in a space of one and a half months. Wow. Um, from Midran to to Isanda with minimum, you know, impact to our customers, but it wasn't that it, w- it wouldn't have been possible if we didn't have the underlining, you know, networking partnership. Right. So um, we brought that data center online as a pop um, on the back of our hundred gig backbone, mm-hmm. um, and so it was it was a lift and shift. Um, and very seamless for customers. I can imagine moving a da- physically moving a data center must be one of the most challenging things you could do. Well, uh, you, you, n- you need to try to think about selecting a data center first when you <laughs> see an empty building and right. somebody's trying to explain to you, picture this, this is what it's going to look like. And we're saying, Darren, it's not. It simply <laughs> just won't. <laughs> and we had a good couple yeah, of laughs of about okay. it. But I mean... Um, again, it was the partnership. We had to trust that they yeah. knew what they were doing. And, and they do because... They had already showed us, you know, mm-hmm. you know, where they had built other facilities, um, and the team that they had was really good as well. So, what has it meant practically for CypherWave as a business? What What have you been able to do now that you've moved into this data center that perhaps you couldn't do before? I mean, I understand there's probably more reliability now, more uptime because uh, well, not necessarily more uptime because yeah. you had backups and that sort of thing. So, yeah. during load shedding, you would have kept running. But uh, what What are some of the, the practical business advantages you've seen from this move? Well, for one, I don't have to worry about the diesel bill anymore that I used to pay on a weekly basis to make sure we kept our 4,000 liters, um, you know, abreast at the old data center. But really, you know, in essence, the benefit for us is, um, you know, the deal was a very unique deal. Um, you know, Wild gave us a dedicated space inside of the OADC um, Isando facility. Yeah. It is branded CypherWave. Okay. Um, so it is a CypherWave data center. We took up office facilities in their branded CypherWave mm-hmm. um, as well. Um, and it was quite important um, that, that we had the same capabilities that, that, that we were used to um, at our Madran data center. And um, again, you know, as, as Darren said, it is open access. So uh, we terminated um, all our own infrastructure. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, we put dual 144 core uh, pairs of fiber between OADC and Terraco. Um, and we sit in the Terraco carrier environment as well. So um, OADC is, is just a natural extension of the facility and our network that sits at Terraco because of the capacity that's there. Mm-hmm. But inside of the OADC facility, again, you know, where the OADC team and the WIOC team came to the table um, to assist us was, was giving us um, um, that, that ability um, and the assistance around terminating our, our fiber cores in that in that mm-hmm. uh, facility. So the benefits for us is is not having to worry about the maintenance largely mm-hmm. um, uh, of the data center. Um, CypherWave is an internet service provider. You know mm-hmm. we're focused on on delivering services to customers. Mm-hmm. Um, and in uh, with our own data center, we had dedicated teams manning the data center. You know monitoring the BMS systems twenty four mm-hmm. by seven. And OADC does that, you know, and now I'm able to, and we as a business are able to repurpose our teams to focus on customer solutions. Um, Rather we had, than managing infrastructure. Exactly, mm-hmm. you know, we had to worry about um, quarterly maintenance on generators, quarterly maintenance on UPSs, and the associated, you know, maintenance mm-hmm. costs with that. 
Um, and so it gave us the peace of mind of focusing on our core yeah. um, you know, part of our business, which was, which was delivering that customer experience as opposed to you know, worrying about you know, the upkeep mm-hmm. um, and uptime of the facility. It's interesting. Do you think that South Africa's energy crisis is actually going to drive companies like CypherWave and others to, to go for an, sort of an outsourced, um, to, to have a third party manage their data center infrastructure just because it has become so difficult and so expensive to keep a data center operating in this environment? I think a short answer is yes, Duncan. Mm-hmm. And I think we've seen it to some extent, right? Um, you know, there's a lot of buzzwords that are happening, you know, inside, inside of industry, consolidation being one of those. And sometimes those buzzwords are usually linked to a specific technology. You know, mm. in the connectivity space, we've heard for the last three to five years about this consolidation that's coming. But I think, I think businesses do need to consistently evaluate what's core to, to their operating model. Yep. Um, if you're not doing that, you're going to be lumped, you know, sitting with, with, with something that you, you, you really can't justify mm-hmm. the operating costs and it puts undue pressure on you. So uh, I do think that that is happening. I think we would have seen to some extent, I, th- I can't remember if it was American Tower buying out MTN's towers and renting it back to them. So there is... Uh, you know, that assessment happening mm-hmm. inside of all facets of business. But I think the question is, you know, what is core to, to delivering, um, you know, that service to your customers? And OADC, as Darren mentioned, are investing heavily in it. From a CypherWave perspective, one of the big reasons that we looked at, at rather moving into another facility and specifically the OADC mm-hmm. one was it's not core to our business. Um, you know, then again, when you look at the, the amount of competition in the market, and yep. thankfully that's more Darren's task now to deal with than it was mine. You have the Vantage data centers, you've got NTT's data center, you've got Terraco's upgraded and expanded space, you've got ADC space, you've got Hertzner that's there, and mm-hmm. we could go on talking about the amount of data center space. That's why Darren is smiling because he's got a lot of work to do. <laughs> but, but, I think if that's your business model and that is is kind of you know yeah. what's core to your business, you can focus your resources and people to delivering. Whereas you know for us it just wasn't. Mm. It was a value add that we had to enable our cloud business, right. and, and and that's why you know it made sense to move into a bigger facility. Darren, um, Wayne's made the point that this is actually a very competitive space, and there's been a lot of investment going on over the last couple of years. Um, do you think the market is is over traded and? Um, as a sort of follow on to that, um, how, how do data center operators, how does OD, OADC, for example, differentiate itself from the data center operator down the road? In other words, why as a customer would I consider going into, for example, the, the OADC data center in Isando as opposed to choosing another data center somewhere else? I think we're positioning it as a cost-effective data center. Okay. <clears throat> we want customer focus. Customers are... Uh, focusing more on their costs these days. Right. And we can enable them to reduce their cost and uh, OPEX costs, et cetera. And we offer value for money on our data centers. Mm-hmm. Plus, I think we offer a lot of customizations that other data centers don't do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, like we offered Wayne, he's got his dedicated space, dedicated office, dedicated access control. Uh, and these are things that we can offer which are unique to the mm-hmm. market. Uh, we also build very quick. Yeah. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> I think when, 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 Wayne, when Wayne and I pulled the trigger and decided that Wayne was going to come in as our anchor customer, we literally had an empty warehouse. And mm-hmm. in 46 days, we'd built a tier three yeah. facility. 46 days? Yeah. How did you do that? <laughs> so, <laughs> so we started this journey earlier in the year. It took longer to build the studio. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, Wayne had a deadline. Right. And in the contract, he said, if we weren't finished by a specific date, he yeah. could go elsewhere. <laughs> so there was a hard and fast date. Yeah. Okay. Fortunately, we had ordered all the M&E equipment we had in the warehouse. Mm-hmm. So we had cooling units and generators and UPSs, et cetera. So when Wayne pulled the trigger and we started the build, mm-hmm. it was literally the team came to site and it was an impossible task. But, you know, we worked myself and yeah. the team were day there and day and night, Monday to Sunday, and mm-hmm. we pulled it off. Yeah. And the facility is amazing. Absolutely. Uh, I think Wayne's extremely happy. Exceptionally. Why did you need to move so quickly? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Duncan, so w- what had happened was, um, uh, you know, December is a, is, a, is a less disruptive time. 
you know, businesses usually closed uh, and wind down. Right. Um, and uh, the Midrain data center was our primary cloud node. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some large scale customers um, that, that sits in that facility um, and there's never a conducive time. Right. So, um, you know, through our evaluation and through the discussions with Darren, and, and Darren's very much a, 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 was very much a part of the conversations when we were talking about what some of our risks are and what, mm -hmm. what some of our challenges were. Um, and when we had made the decision that we are going to move and we selected OADC um, and we sat down, it, it was the most, it was the best suited time. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't ideal because of the short time frames. And I think, again, you know, to some extent, it wasn't just the scenario of me phoning Darren and saying, you know, if this, then that. Mm -hmm. It was, it was we, we, you know, Darren and, and his team actually came through to have a look at our data center. Um, looking at the scale of what we were looking to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think what worked out relatively well, aside, aside from the pressure and the late nights and the calls, you know, um, and the short timelines, mm -hmm. was, was we had a network. Mm -hmm. so, so it was a lift and shift. <coughs> and the challenge was, was really um, exacerbated by the, the time to deliver, um, you know, getting, getting equipment, uh, you know, moved in mm -hmm. uh, amidst all of the challenges that we had at the time you know, getting stuff in through the ports, et cetera. So, so OADC had the team. Um, and, and from the time that we saw the empty warehouse to looking at the plans and discussing it, there was a, uh, there was a real question it's asked, like, time. like is, it real, is it realistic? And, um, and at the end of the day, Duncan, it was the customers. You know, uh, customers, we needed to go back with firm dates, with firm commitments. Um, and, and you wanted to do this move over the Christmas period. It, it was before. It was before the freeze period, actually. Okay. So, so we needed to be. We needed to be in by the by the end of November, um, uh, and and we allowed ourselves the first week of December as a soak in period mm -hmm. to allow to test. Okay. Um, and uh, I think I think collectively with the CypherWave team, I, I've never seen a bunch of people work so well together against such. Um, you know, a short time frame mm -hmm. and, and coupled with customers. We were realistic and they had real business concerns. You know, some of our customers are retail customers. December is the most busiest time. Mm -hmm. And we exposed all of this to Darren and the team. We played open cards. We told them to, to a large extent which, w what the dependencies were with mm -hmm. key customers. It was a partnership. Um, and um, the customers bought into it because we had to position the why mm -hmm. to them as well. Um, after we had gotten Darren to commit to it as, you know, to make sure that we were backed up. So that's largely the reason, the reason why it was mm -hmm. just the most opportune time from a, from a, from a, de uh, from a, from a trading perspective. Um, and to try and beat the uh, freeze period because mm -hmm. then all of the network teams go away. And if anything right. had to happen, we wouldn't have had anybody available. Mm. So it was the best time for our team to be able to then go back and also, whilst everybody's away, Quiet start to cross-check yeah. and make mm -hmm. sure everything, you know, uh, worked before January when we knew uh, that businesses are going to hit the ground mm -hmm. running, you know, and expect productivity levels to be back to normal. So, Wayne, what exactly is involved in, in moving? I mean, let's, let's take one of your big retail customers, for example. They, yeah. they, they're obviously very reliant on their website for, for business. Now, you've got to move that from Midrand to, to Isando. How do you actually do that? Do you, yeah. do you replicate the server... Uh, on the uh, in Isando yeah. and then just cut across. Yeah. How does it work exactly? Yeah, so that's a that's a very good question. Um, so with our cloud services, we we had our primary cloud sitting in our Madrid data center, and our secondary uh, sitting in in the Terraco data center. Um, depending on what type of customer the service, uh, the, uh, what what type of service the customer has with mm -hmm. us, um, we had to kind of plot as part of our project plan how we would move the facilities or the services. Mm -hmm. So the way it worked was we had, uh, where we had customers who had r replicated services with us, it was easy enough to switch off on the one side and get them to reconnect to the facilities at the second data center. Um, for the other customers who only had a primary instance uh, with us, there it, it involved us moving that infrastructure. So we had to arrange with the customer convenient time. All of this was done after hours. Okay. So, so that was the one thing, you, mm -hmm. know, uh, you know, it had to happen after hours and there were scheduled windows for when that would happen. Oh. So um, like with anything, you know, there was a dress rehearsal. And by that, I mean, we had to physically um, run through shutting down what that would involve. There's how information would be, uh, would be secured as such. 
uh, there was a physical dry run of literally unracking, packing, and putting it into um, you know uh, freight vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a courier company, uh, in fact, more than one. Um, in some instances, we had to get armored vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, we had diverse routes to get to Isando, and we literally had to dry run this. Armored vehicles because of the sensitivity of, of the data, data on those yes. servers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for some, for, for you know, to some extent, uh, based on some uh, some of our customers, and we've got. Uh, medical organizations who host in our cloud and they've got patient data. Um, and so we had to give certain reassurance. Uh, and, and yes, I know it sounds like it would be out of the ordinary, but we did have armored vehicles, um, you know, that had to transport certain data. Um, and so what we did was through the, the dry runs, it gave us the ability to actually time the downtime window mm -hmm. to the minute um, that we needed to do it. And so, we, and so when it came to our scheduled migration days, um, what we what we did do for our change controls that we had in place uh, is exactly as I've explained. For customers that that required their services to be up, we just moved it across um, to the secondary facility, and they continued to you know to 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 do what they needed to do. Sure. Um, for other customers, or where we were moving some of our primary services, um, those were seen as maintenance windows to allow us um, to 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 shut down the equipment um, in a proper manner, put it into the transportation vehicles, move it across. Um, and then all in all, it took our guys uh, around 45 minutes to be able to, uh, once the servers were put into the rack, mm -hmm. to be able to patch up, bring it up, and bring it onto the network. And it was all because um, what we had done is the minute OADC was live and on the network on a 100 gig backbone, mm. um, literally all of the IPs remained the same. It was literally okay. a shift in move. Yeah, interesting. I mean, some of the networking and networking skills you obviously need in in, in that sort of move is is, is pretty advanced. Uh, Absolutely, making sure that those IPs remain the same. Absolutely, probably not the easiest thing to do. It was to the contrary. It was it was very easy. We was literally it? moved yeah. it as if we were moving it from one room to another. Right. Because um, uh, what we had done is we had deployed um, in conjunction with the WIOC team mm -hmm. um, our new Juniper equipment in the new data center um, and connected it into a hundred gig core backbone. So it was already on our network, and our network had already seen OADC just as another node. Mm -hmm. So when, uh, when our servers and nodes moved across, it, it basically just married back mm -hmm. on, okay, this looks familiar, and it continued to mm -hmm. connect and talk back into the network. Right, right. Now, you've spoken about the advantages that this brings you and the fact that it allows you to spend more time with your customers rather than trying to manage a, a data center through load shedding, et cetera, et cetera. But um, in the longer term, what does it mean for CypherWave uh, in terms of your business development? Um, you're obviously going to grow business because you can spend more time with customers and, and um, getting new customers as well. But having this base, this data center from which you can now operate, uh, what does it mean for your business growth going forward? Yeah, so Darren touched it. I think mm -hmm. one of the biggest um, positioning or selling points was Having our own data center gave us the ability to, to manage our input costs and, and to be able to compete. Um, our data center was purposely built for our cloud and we use it as part of our journey to the cloud for customers. Um, and what that means was, was really just going to customers and saying, why don't we move some of your on-premise stuff into a facility mm -hmm. um, whilst you sweat that asset? Uh, and when it came time for them to review that asset and whether they wanted to re reinvest into it, we would then talk to them about our cloud. Um, and that would only be possible if we had the ability to control some of the input costs. Um, again, through our partnership with the OADC team, um, we had to we, we, we had very tense discussions around commercials. We did, we did. <laughs> um, and but but they understood that we needed that flexibility to remain competitive. Okay. Um, and so and so they gave us that ability. So we sit in a very fortunate position that we are able to to still remain competitive. Mm -hmm. Um, from, a, from an input costing perspective. The other thing was um, moving into this data center and building our own infrastructure into it. Um, and I just want to talk about what that means. So inside of that data center, all of the reticulation in that facility inside of the CypherWave um, facility is all managed by CypherWave. Mm -hmm. So when it lands inside of OADC, it's a CypherWave technician that's patching the okay. customer through to that meet me room because with the help of the OADC team, We've pretty much um, we've reticulated that entire facility ourselves. So 
that does give us the ability to to still impart uh, you know you know our own brand experience to mm. our customers that come into that facility so when you walk into OADC you know whilst there is a rest of an, a data center that's there mm-hmm. when you veer left to the Cypherwave facility you immediately feel that presence it's entirely branded Cypherwave mm-hmm. you walk into our boardroom which is there which with the boardroom table all branded Cypherwave and so our customers that are there whilst OADC does have you know central customer areas you can go into our facility we have our own coffee bar that's mm-hmm. there your team can work from it it's at a slightly better temperature than the data center is <laughs> 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 but but we have all of the comforts of our mm-hmm. own so it gives us the ability to still compete inside of uh, you know a very competitive mm-hmm. data center space the way we've set up that facility duncan what's important is we could give other smaller isps the same experience we have mm-hmm. um in the sense that they may have their infrastructure at other facilities but you know those input costs might not be something they're able to move through the partnership we're able to do that and and pretty much give them the ability to replicate cypherwave inside of our facility mm-hmm. whilst they remain um you know agnostic have the flexibility to do do what they they currently do mm-hmm. um and naturally because we also have uh you know all of that infrastructure going back you know to 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 the terracos um and other facilities we could give them that same ability mm-hmm. and and i think a lot of organizations are are questioning and are looking and are evaluating in the same manner cypherwave is because we know that the market is competitive mm-hmm. businesses are looking at all aspects of costs and they're looking at how they can you know better the input costs mm-hmm. Darren, you guys built this facility in 46 days, but that does not mean that you cut corners. In fact, the the data center is ISO certified. Take us through what that means. So uh, we're under ISO. Uh, we're getting our ISO certification now. Okay. It's under process. All right. Uh, it's designed for. It's a tier three design. What is a tier three design? Exactly. Uh, it's issued by the Uptime Institute. It's a specific mm-hmm. design for concurrent maintainability of various electrical and mechanical yeah. uh, parts of the data center. Okay. uh it just gives customers that extra comfort mm-hmm. that you know everything's been done to a specific standard mm-hmm. i think that's what yeah you know it's a key driver for Wayne and and other yes. customers coming in is comfortability and know that you know the lights are always on yeah. basically it's not going to fall yeah, out exactly yeah yeah exactly yeah. cuz i think you know africa's completely different to the rest of the world we have a lots of challenges yeah. it basically yeah. comes around power Mm-hmm. and you know that's what we've got to mitigate yeah. we've got to make sure it stays on all the time in some of the markets that you operate in like nigeria for example they're well known f- for having power shortages for many years how do you keep those uh, data centers op- operating through these through these long periods of power outages is it just diesel burning are you able to take advantage of of uh, of renewable energy sources so nigeria at the moment uh, the grid is very unreliable mm. probably 30% availability at our location So we basically running generators 24/7. Wow. So the diesel wow. bill is a watery large. Wow. Yes. Okay. So yes we are looking at sustainable sustainability solutions at the moment. Uh we have got a 2 hectare plot adjacent to our site in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of projects underway. Uh we're looking at uh, renewables in South Africa as well mm-hmm. to uh, supply our existing sites. So it's a lot of work but uh, it's needed and mm. you know it's it's what's necessary. Yeah. Can you can you feasibly though take a data center off the grid and run it entirely on solar power because I imagine it's difficult. At, at night it's problematic. It is. You're you going to need massive batteries to That's too. the problem. Yeah. And the cost, mm. the capex cost associated to that Huge. and your returns. Yeah. That's what the issue is. That's the issue. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Before we wrap, uh Darren, the last question for you. I uh, just wanted to perhaps get a view on OADC's investment plans going forward. Uh, what's next for the company? Uh what's on the road map? So we've got the uh phase 2 expansion in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. Uh that's quite a heavy capex item for us. Right. Uh, it'll be another 12 megawatts additional for that site. Uh the first phase is almost completely sold out. Mm-hmm. Uh then we've got DRC which is coming online in August and then there'll be a second phase to that. That must have even more power charges. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a bit better because they they've got a lot of hardware there. Ah. Uh so power's not as big an issue in DRC now mm-hmm. they're in Malawi. Mm-hmm. And then we're looking at countries like Zambia, Malawi, things like that, uh southern DRC. Mm-hmm. You know, wherever our customers demand is is where we'll go. Yeah. You know, uh we don't just want to build a site and hope for the best that's going to fill up. 
Yeah. You know, we want to build something that's, you know, got mm. to anchor customer and uh, it's got a long-term plan and view for it. Yeah. It's interesting what you say about uh, some of these um, markets that I think perhaps are, are not often addressed in the ICT equation anyway. Sure. Um, a lot of the data center investments happened here in, in South Africa, particularly here in Joburg, uh, Nigeria and Kenya. Um, you don't often hear about DRC in the context of a, a data center, but um, what, what are some of the opportunities in the smaller markets around Africa for uh, OADC? I think the, the issue in the smaller markets has been cost of connectivity. So the growth of the internet in those markets has been pretty small. Okay. Now with all the investments and new submarine cables going live and, and s- cables that are open access, mm. you know, DRC is going to see an explosion of capacity. Uh, and these are big markets. These I mean, are massive DRC's markets. DRC's got, uh, what, 80, big countries 90 as well. million people? But it's a, it's yeah. a vast country, you know, vast, to cover. Yeah. Jungle. Uh, Yes, mm. it is. Mm. And then Zambia and Malawi, they're up and coming markets now. You know, we've seen capacity go from STM1s, STM4s, mm-hmm. now 10s, and now we're delivering 100 gigs now into mm, those interesting, markets. Interesting. So the markets are growing rapidly now. And, you know, they're not going to be thousands of rack data centers. They're going to be 100 to 200 rack data centers to start initially. Mm-hmm. But that's sort of the, the core market we're going to address there. Mm-hmm. Fascinating conversation, guys, but I think we're going to have to leave it there. Darren Bedford is Thank Chief you. Development Officer at Wyock Group, and Wayne DeSalle, of course, is CEO of CypherWave. Thank you so much for sharing these great insights with us today. Great. Thank you. To you. Thanks, Duncan.